jujitsu and self-defense. Now, this all started because of an alleged incident. Okay, let's make this very clear. It was an alleged, alleged. incident in Sao Paulo last That's weekend. True. No one can be sure. Yeah. BJJ world champion Leandro Lowe was allegedly involved in a violent incident at a bar in Sao Paulo. What we do know is that he suffered an injury that was definitely not jujitsu related, <laughs> yeah, okay? Yeah. Those are the facts. Now, beyond that, let's try not speculate too much, but what we can certainly say is that some, something like that. What have you heard? What have you heard? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> you I heard did see was the like photo of the other guy as well. Yeah, oh, I, I, I heard there was like that. ninjas. He and didn't do like well. This, <laughs> he didn't fare well. I, mean, I, did yeah. Yeah. I already messed up like a group of dudes, like four dudes. Allegedly. Alleged. Allegedly, yeah, he allegedly. Confirm or nor deny. We believe that there were multiple attackers. Now, jujitsu is often referred to as like not the best form of self-defense against multiple attackers, but Leandro is the one that walked away from it with a little cut. I'm guessing it went more in his favor than the other guys. What do we think about that? I don't know. What, what they say about Leandro is he's like a big partier, right? Is that... They, it's he, been known he, that, that they say, Leandro right? goes out on the town. I, I believe that there's somebody at this table, maybe even more than one, that's who, what have, who have <laughs> intimate <laughs> knowledge of the, this. The photo is with you as well, Reed. Oh, yeah, so, it was with me. That's yeah. right. yeah. <laughs> so let's put some of this in, con in context. You guys, you've been partying with Leandro. You've been out on the town with Leandro. He's, What's it like? He's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I, I could see someone taking maybe uh, his good-natured humor the wrong way. Leandro is pretty intense. Uh, just says he is on the mat out in the, the club or the street. So... Might rub people up the wrong way. Very, very possible. I can mm. see it. Yeah, it sounds like there's a whole deep story there, and I don't. I'm kind of coming to it a little late. I'm still a little jet lagged and everything from the from the flight. But so it sounds like somebody hit him in the head with a bottle. Is that what happened? Th that's what he straight up said. Somebody hit him over the head with somebody, a bottle. He somebody. ended up with a, a gash on his on the top of his head, stitches. I and mean, we have the photo on our website. You know, he's got his head bandaged up. It's all split open and stuff. That wasn't a knee or an elbow in jujitsu. I mean, this happened on a Thursday night during carnival in Brazil. And oh, carnival wow. is like a week-long party, right? So, you know, he wasn't in the gym when it happened. But, like, whatever, you know, snowballed on from there, the fact is that a jiu-jitsu world champion was involved in something that went down at a bar. And it opens up the question about jiu-jitsu and self-defense. So our contributor, Josh Hinger, wrote that fantastic article, basically calling out one of the greatest I, figures I in jiu-jitsu of all time. I put it out there that my opinion is that Leandro is a legend. Man, what a badass. Yeah. <laughs> that's my, that's my. Like, <laughs> like I, I don't know, it doesn't sound great, but like he probably did something, I don't know, to get hit over the head with a bottle. I've never get hit, hit over the head with a bottle. Cause like, we can arrange it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it doesn't sound great, but like, that's, I don't know, I think what a badass. That's, that's my opinion on him. I think, one, I think one of the points that Hinger was making in his article was that jujitsu, although it might not be the best form of self-defense, it prepares you for a fight. You know, your, your instincts get better, your reactions get better, your cardio, you know. Um, multiple attackers, that's a different story. So who knows really what happened, how it went down, if he was taking them on one at a time, if he was, you know, if he actually even took anybody to the ground or this stayed on the feet and he was yeah, swinging. Hickson said that sport jiu-jitsu is no good for a real fight. All right, self-defense or, or whatever it might be, Valtudo, that's his era, right? But a real fight, sport jiu-jitsu, Hickson says it's useless. And yet one of the greatest current sport jiu-jitsu practitioners, one of the greatest athletes on the circuit, uh, walked away with a, a scratch after being attacked by multiple attackers. Sounds like it worked in his favor, huh? It's true. That's Absolutely. What... You know, and uh, self-defense in general, when you watch some of the seminars and techniques being demonstrated, it's hard to imagine them really working. Like we see that the, the most ridiculous ones are the gun defenses and knife defense where you just you realize you're being trained how to get stabbed. Like, <laughs> like uh, it's yeah. just not going to work. And you just wonder where this disconnect is. Like, where, where did the guys who paved the way to reality-based fighting and, and the MMA and Balotudo, why are they going back to sort of kata and like old, very old school traditional martial All arts? All right, good question. So Hickson Gracie, okay, he fought. He fought back in the day, kind of before we had the modern era. So obviously it was a little bit different for him, but he fought bare knuckle, he fought jujitsu, and then, you know, he kind of like retired and a, a new generation came along. Now he's moved away from all of that completely. He doesn't train sport jujitsu guys. He doesn't train MMA fighters. Now he's teaching self-defense headlock escapes. I mean, like, what is that about? Well, is that an evolution of his martial arts or is it something else? Just, I mean, I guess maybe to take Hicks inside a little bit in the argument, like, 
Josh did train MMA, right? Mm. Josh does have MMA fights. And like Josh, and, and like the kind of crux of his, his article is how he opens it about um, getting into a bar fight in some foreign country. And then he, and he takes the guy down, which is wrestling, not jujitsu, right? And then ground and pounds him, MMA. Which I, so I, I feel like he's a little bit more prepared than a lot of the like, letting on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I think the that modern blue belt who does Dela Heave is a very Exactly. Well, and yeah. then <laughs> so like okay, so you think that like okay, does Hickson have a point that that sport jujitsu kind of like is not going in a great direction? You know, like I think of like I don't want to put anybody on blast, but like you kind of think of like. Um, people who don't have takedowns, like the meows or or something like that, you know, like if they were in that situation, would they be able to double leg th these big Irish dudes and, and ground and pound them? You know, I think I think Josh has a little. There's a little he's leading on a little bit more. Than Leandro is also a, a gigantic man. He's a, he's he's a, a big yeah, ass he's dude. A physical he's specimen. He's so, yeah. a yeah. big dude. But my question is, okay, my point is this, I guess, is that yeah, you know. You could argue that the tactics used by sport jujitsu guys maybe aren't as effective in a real fight. You know, you won't see a guy pulling Dela Heva in the street or something like that. But let's just look at it from a sport jujitsu point of view, right? That regardless of the tactics that I use when I'm on the mat, you know what it's like when you're grappling a day one white belt, okay? And that's what the majority of people on the streets walking mm -hmm. on this earth are a day one white belts. They've never done jujitsu in their life. And even a blue belt grabs hold of those guys and fucking toys with them like they're children and a big strong guy is suddenly completely fish out of water he doesn't know how to move he doesn't not prepared for it and a blue belt can just take his back choke him out with ease now seeing that that's not applicable to a street situation that blue belt couldn't do the same thing what do you think it just seems wrong and the evidence also indicates that i mean there's plenty of, of surveillance footage i remember there's a a famous case of some guy who was at an ATM. Someone came up behind him and started choking him. He got out of the choke and then took his back and left him unconscious. He was a blue belt when, when that happened, he said. So it's just the evidence it's is true. out there supporting sports jiu-jitsu, where the other evidence is just guys talking about how it doesn't work. Yeah, well, this is the thing as well, is the pressure testing, right? It's like self-defense. There's never any resistance to those techniques. I never see anybody struggling to escape from the headlock takedown. But that's what we do every day in jiu-jitsu. We struggle. Right. We know how to fight, right? I think another thing that's, uh, that Henry said that's important to take into account is that, um, you know, um, jiu-jitsu is... Sorry, I just forgot my point. <laughs> <laughs> Man, just, to, just to go he back, more fading away. Right? <laughs> just, just to go so. back to the, the takedown thing. Like I remember going um, to Royal, which is an event that we have on Flow Grappling, right? A great event and features some like the biggest names, lower belts in, in our sport. And it's um, the, one of the rules is that you can't pull guard, right? Mm. And if you pull guard, to keep it real. Yeah, 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 to keep it real. And if you pull guard in the first minute, you get a, po a point deducted. And a lot of guys, a lot of these guys, you know, um, who are the Brazilians who are purple belt world champions, you know, brown belt world champions, they went out there and they pulled guard. And, uh, and so they just ate the point. So they, yeah, they right, immediately right. got a negative point, you know? And then so I interviewed all these guys afterwards and I talked to them and I said, I said, hey, I was like, why did you, why did you pull guard? And they said, well, what else was I going to do? Like, because they don't trade they, I don't yeah, do takedowns. I don't know so how to do a takedown. I, like, he's like, my only option to get it to the ground is to sit down. So like, but, but that's and, that, that, and those guys are really good. That's what yeah, my, she, she just reminded me of my point. Yeah. So here, here it says that you know, you, if you're in a fight, you would be smart enough not to pull guard, not to do a yeah. barren bowl. You're not going to pull X guard. Yeah. In a fight, you know. So like, you also have to consider the situation. Mm -hmm. Right. So. You, just get, you get into a dirty clinch, and then you pretty much just fall over. I bet it would work. I mean, most people don't know how to wrestle either. So just tie it up, and however ugly it is, you might even end up in a bad position in what would be sports jiu-jitsu, but if they don't know what they're doing, boom, you're on the back again. You know? Absolutely, so. and that's why jiu-jitsu is often touted as like the best form of self-defense because, you know, we've seen it time and time again that jiu-jitsu, sorry, the, 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 you know, real life encounters, it's very quickly a, just a mess of limbs rolling around on the floor, people headlocking each other, and they have no idea what to do. And I think anybody with a jiu-jitsu, uh, you know, a rudimentary knowledge of jiu-jitsu in that situation is probably gonna come out on top. But hey, you're not gonna meet. You're not gonna see me going out in the street testing that, that yeah, theory. Yeah. So. It's, a, it's a it's a wild debate, and uh, there's people like all over the place on mm -hmm. it. I feel like it, it's it's a weird thing to kind of pin down. And be like, how would jiu-jitsu work in in this street fight scenario? And like, oh, well, here's it's the question: so hard to know. Street it's fight. So Some guys come up in your face. What are you gonna do? 
I'm gonna walk away. I don't yeah, wanna, I'm gonna walk exactly, away. Exactly. Like, and I think, and I think, jujitsu, like having the confidence of like knowing that if I got into a fight, I think I'd do all right. So like that is bad, right? Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. that's yeah. bad because that you means be that I, those ads, yeah, that means right? that I'm more likely to get into a confrontation like, than when uh, if I wasn't confident in a, in, a, in a fight, I'd immediately get away. I'd immediately go right. away from it. You know, it's almost like you want to test it a little bit. Yeah, like, man, yeah. What, and, what could and I so do like in a that's kind of not good. Uh, not a good thing. But right? I, I, I think one of the good <laughs> things about jujitsu. So Danaher said this: like, what does jujitsu do? It it closes the space, right? And if you know jujitsu, it takes away one of the big threats, like a, a haymaker punch or a kick, right? So you're taking away your opponent's explosive tools that could really hurt you, right? So that's what I think jujitsu is actually a good martial art for the streets. Of course, with you know stipulations, you're not baron bowling, you're not pulling guard in the street. I think Good cardio point. is, a, is a, a, gonna be the difference maker. If, if you can go like longer than 30 seconds in, in that type of scenario, like. Man, I right? don't know though, even though like, even a trained guy, you get that big adrenaline dump, right? That's that's that, ooh, but so maybe if you compete a lot, a here's an argument for the competitor. You know, you're used to that. And, and maybe you do go on the autopilot of some sort and that other guy, man, he gasses out hard, and again, you win with jiu jitsu. And so. if you had a few drinks, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you might, you might you be probably, Iron Man out there. You probably have if you get into street fights. Let's be real. Like, that's something that happens when you're out partying. Crazy debate. I'm really, really glad that uh, Josh wrote that article, though. Really, really great article. Definitely something uh, we as the uh, jiu jitsu community should, should, he, should be he, talking about. He also made a good point is why can't it be both? Why can't we have self defense jiu jitsu? Why can't we have sport jiu jitsu? Well, I come from an era when, when I started jiu jitsu. In our geese, we used to have one guy put on a pair of boxing gloves and the other guy would basically have to try and take him down while getting punched in the head. That was part of our jujitsu classes. <laughs> it wasn't like, okay, this guy's going to you know, attack you like this and you do a shoulder <clears throat> throw. No, no, it was like you, the guy's going to try and kick your ass and you got to get out of there. you got to mm -hmm. take him down or whatever. So I think, you know, it, it, I still see very few people training like that and maybe there's an argument for it. But. I mean, the ultimate argument, I think, for self-defense is just, just do MMA. Learn how to strike. Learn how to wrestle. See, but I don't. I don't agree with that because when you when you're in a fight, do you actually want to stand and bang with somebody? Do you want, do you want to go like sh like? If you have some striking awareness, you could avoid their punches. Maybe maybe you would be able to shell up better than you would without Manage any striking. Manage the distance. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm not thinking I want to throw bombs, especially at my size. I'm definitely hoping to get on someone's back. So, right, right. Um, I but think you definitely have the speed advantage, but <laughs> yeah. 